All right, so before we get started in Blender 2.8, I need to talk about a few differences. We're going to be using an emitter. Now, emitters no longer use groups. They can use collections, though. So everything in this collection, I'm going to name straw. I'm going to take out anything that I don't want in it. So if you open this up, you're going to have a camera. I'm going to drag that out. You're going to have a light, and you're going to have a cube. I could just tab into that cube, delete it, and then hit Shift-A, put a cylinder. Where is it? There we go. And you can edit the different cylinders properties in the lower left right there. That looks fine to me. Having that select, I'm going to scale that way down. Let's go ahead and hit one and then hit S for scale and then Z. So S scale Z to make it go straight up like this. Now I'm going to try and do this smooth. So hit right click, uh, set smooth, hit control R. I'm just going to bring this up to the top there, so I'm giving more geometry so it's a little bit better looking. But you're probably not even going to be able to notice that. There we go. Now, every piece of straw has a kind of like a globule on it as it grows. So I'm going to create that up here. Control R, add an edge loop. Zoom in, Control R, middle mouse button, put a lot of edge loops like that. Alt A unselects everything. And then if you hold Alt and get the edge right there, it'll select everything. Turn on proportional editing, put that to, well, let's try smooth. Middle mouse button will move that down like that. Ah, there you go. You got the little, uh, I don't even know what to call that thing. Anybody knows what that's called, let me know in the comments below. There you go. All right, so now I have a piece of straw, which I'm going to call straw, which is really cool that you can actually just rename it there and you're good to go. Now I'm going to duplicate this a couple times because we're going to have a variety of different pieces of straw in our collection. Tab into this first one, unselect everything, enable this button right here, it lets you edit and select vertices behind. I'm just moving this down, tabbing out, hitting straw two, selecting these, moving it down, because we want to have different looking pieces of straw, right? And you can even change the size, but we can do that randomly anyways. And then I'm also gonna select this right here. If you notice, I was pushing this, like the A button a lot. I'm still not used to Blender 2.8 where you have to hit Alt-A to unselect everything. It's a, it's a good design choice, but it's just, I'm not used to it. So as I select all these different things, I'm creating a variety of different looking straw. And there we go. Now we want to add color. Color is really cool because we can actually take it from an image. Now, if you hit N to bring up this window here, you can see that it's missing the add image, right? So how they do it now in Blender 2.8 is you hit Shift A, add an empty, and there's an image that you can add to the empty. Going down to the empty settings there, you can hit open and you can actually put an image on there. So I'm gonna scale this up a bit. I'm gonna do that right now. And now I have this added. Going one, different piece of straw at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new material. So let's select with the color picker, just anywhere there, boop. And you can't see it because it's using the workbench shading. This is wireframe, workbench, EV, and then cycles, depending on if you actually set cycles up or not. So for example, it's set to EV, so it's not using cycles. Now you can see that it adds it to every piece of straw. So I'm gonna select this new one, hit minus this, new, and then just do the same thing. And we do that until <laughs> that's almost the exact same color. You could darken that just a bit if you want to. There we go. Okay, straw one, let's get this one. Again, have to hit new, or you could hit this one and it'll just create a new material based off all the settings. That's a good one. Straw two, we've already got. Straw three, do the same thing. Hopefully we get a darker color, yep. Move that up. Straw four. I'm just gonna eyeball that one for speed sake. There we go. So now we have different pieces of straw with different colors and you can you, you could do more than just five pieces of straw like I'm doing. You could do as many as you want, but there we go. This next part is where there's gonna be a lot of mistakes. You cannot be inside this collection when you want to use that collection as the objects in the emitter. So selecting outside of there, I hit Shift A, add a plane, scale that way up. This is gonna be my, my emitter and you can see that it actually added it right here. 
So let's delete that. Let's try that again. Maybe even just hiding that. Shift A, plane. Nope, it just keeps, where is it putting it? Plane right there. That's funny. Okay, now we should be good. Let's go ahead and add an emitter and then hit play to see what it does. And it's working. Now we don't want this to emit like snow or rain. So the emitter already has a force that's one pushing up, but then gravity is pulling it down. So we want to change this to physics and yeah, that's fine. It's going to be force weights, change the gravity down to like 0.1. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna go up and then it's just gonna kind of float there slightly. And that's gonna give us a nice enough depth, if you can see there, that the different straw will overlap. Now here's the bread and butter of the tutorial right here. You go to render, there we go. Instead of halo, you go to collection. And then under collection, I go to straw. I don't want to use the whole collection because then it uses every single piece at the same time. I want to pick it random. Global coordinates, sure. Object rotation, sure. And you can see that that's not facing the correct way, right? So what you want to do is, I believe it's not, it's rotation, yes. Change this to normal tangent. And now if you play it, you can see that it's doing a lot better except we want this to be randomized, right? Oops, randomized there. And then the randomized phase, it's normal tangent, so it's flat. This will kind of alter it. Think about it kind of pointing more towards the screen or not. I wish it did in real time. Do you see how it's like pointing towards the screen? That's way too much. So I want to change that to maybe like 0.1, maybe even less, here we go. Just playing around with these. And you can play until you get the exact uh, right one. See, that's actually looking pretty good. So now I have this straw that's going up like that, and it's looking good. We want to change the size. So under renderer, you renderer, render, just render. <laughs> you change the scale up to about what you want, okay? And we don't want it that big. And then you can also change the scale randomness. So some pieces are gonna be bigger than others, right? We do not want to render the emitter, so you want to deselect that. And now that is not looking like, do you see how they're all kind of going the same way too much? So you need to change the random orientation again in the rotation panel, hit play. That's looking a lot better, but that's not enough, right? We want more pieces of straw. So under number, I'm going to change this up to 20,000. You can play around, <laughs> you can play around with it and see how much you need. And there you go, you can see that it's looking pretty good right there. And then I actually want to change the lifetime. So da -da 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 -da, frame start and let's just end on like 20. So it's gonna be really fast. Do you see how that worked? And now we have straw. I could hide the collection there, hit one. And now we, <laughs> that's kind of cool looking, huh? If you don't like how crazy pointy that is, like it's coming towards the screen a little bit too much, you could go back down and change the randomized thing like this. Change the phase up a bit. Try that. There you go. A lot less. So it's looking more like grass. And you could actually use this to make grass if you want to. Now you can see that it's going the same direction. You change that with randomness, randomized phase. Let's try that. And this is way too much. Now that I've made it, you know, less time. That's what you do, okay. So you want to make sure that the phase randomization is high, but this randomization is semi-low. So now I have straw. What I want to do is I actually want these edges so that when I render them, I can actually create like planes with alphas so that you have that coming out. I don't want a seamless texture of, of straw. I want to be something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, there we go. Control Alt Zero will bring the camera here. You can change it to the settings that you want. So for example, I want this to be, go here to the print. I don't know, 1024 by 1024 so that it's just faster rendering time. I want that edge here so that I can actually get the alpha. So if I wanted a, a plane 
with this, I could use that. If I just want the texture here, I can use the middle. You can maybe zoom in a little bit more. So go to camera, go to orthographic, change the scale up until you're just barely like that. And that's probably fine, right? You might want to have a little bit of padding so that as you get the planes, you can do that. Okay. Now, this is the last part. We're going to talk about how to render this out. You go to camera. We do want ambient occlusion. And then film. You want to hit alpha transparent like that. So now I have this. I can go ahead and go to the camera itself. That's looking good. It was this, the view layers. The passes. We want to make sure that's EV. You want a normal pass. You want an ambient occlusion combined. Sure. And then you hit F12. We'll just go ahead and render that. And you can see that I, I mean, it's kind of looking good, except it's rendering that right there. We want this to be evenly applied across the whole image. So let's go ahead and zoom out, del delete this light, or better yet, just change this light into a sun. As I'm trying to render this, what's going to be a problem is you're going to have these big stinking pieces of straw sticking out of your image, right? And so it's not going to quite work. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I could have planned for this in the beginning and actually have the plane be somewhere else, which I wonder if I just do that. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the camera and the light. You don't really need to move the light, but I'm going to move it away from the straw like that. Now, if I hit F12, it's going to render and it's not going to have that piece of straw in the middle of my picture, as you can see right there. Now, if I don't like the thickness or whatever the straw, I can always go back and I can edit it and change it. So for example, this is looking pretty thin. And so let's go ahead and just select all these pieces of straw. There we go, tab. Hit Alt S for scale. Now I'll just make it fatter, right? And now as you look at this, this is looking a lot fatter. It kind of looks like, I don't know, some sort of food actually, more than anything else. I can select this, change the amount that comes out. So let's just do 5,000. Go ahead and hit play. Again, way too much. I like some, some alpha in between those, right? And you can get as thick or as non-thick as you want. Let's go ahead and render this. And there we have our straw. You have the nice little edges there. You can go over here, hit normal to get a normal map. You can save that out, save as. You can go to ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion isn't as strong as I'd like, so let's go ahead and change that. So go up here, ambient occlusion. Let's change the distance up a lot like this, okay? Now if I render this, there we go. This is going to look great. That's my ambient occlusion. It really does look like some sort of noodles. You can play around with the thickness and get the texture that you exactly want. But what I found is the best thing to do is you take this and inside Photoshop, you actually just add this layer over top of the, just the, the, um, the combined layer right here with a multiply to like 0.25 and it adds a really good looking effect. Oh, I'll just show you right now. So let me save these out. All right. So I have my two different ones. Here's my ambient occlusion. Here's my test. I'm going to go ahead and select this and then just paste it right on top there. Now, if you go to multiply or even overlay, let's see, you can play around. Either one's going to work. You don't want hundred percent. It's just going to add a little bit of depth. Do you see how that's actually looking really good right there? That looks like real straw with shadows and everything like that. If you hit control on this layer down here, as you select it, it will do an alpha selection and then I can just hit delete. Oops invert that and then hit delete <laughs> ah image select where am i looking at image inverse selection edit <laughs> all right so then you just hit inverse right here and then delete i'll get rid of that and now you have a nice texture right there that looks realistic you can play around with this to your liking right if if you want it less ambient occlusion, more ambient occlusion, etc. And that's how you get a nice looking texture.
All right, so that's it for the tutorial. I hope this was useful. I hope it was helpful. Those are the same words, useful and helpful, but whatever. It's the end of the tutorial, so I can say whatever I want. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, watch some more of my videos, and thank you guys. It's been fun. Bye.